Hi everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mitch. I'm Miss Mitch. I'm Shishma. Today we're going to start our journey in Nubara Shen. I think you can see behind me there's a sign. Yeah. We're in a beautiful park here mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to have a little wander around this village. It's about five kilometers outside of uh, Erebuni, I think, Mrs. Mitch. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to go through um, like Ararat Valley, and visit some villages there and show you around some different places that we haven't been before, some a little bit out of the way places. So stay with us and enjoy the video. Yeah, beautiful little park, church there in the back. Wonderful. Little children's play area. Looks looks like it's the main street, but there's no shops along here except for that one. So we just stopped at this park to start with. Didn't we, Shushma? Yes. Yes. And now we're going to continue our journey. I can't see any shops around here. I guess they must be back there. So before we begin our journey from Yerevan to Arani. I just want to show you an outline of Armenia because many people, uh, especially uh, those uh, non-Armenians, don't really know where Armenia is situated. So we've got the Black Sea here, we've got Georgia here, and we've got uh, the Caspian Sea over here. This is the northern uh, border of Armenia. And as we go down, this is the uh, western border, where uh, is Turkey. Down here we have Nakhichevan, which used to be a part of Armenia. This is uh, now controlled by Azerbaijan, though this is part of Azerbaijan. And you can see the southern border is very small. And over on the eastern side of Armenia is Azerbaijan. We'll talk more about uh, Artsakh uh, in just a minute. But this is the journey that we took, and we'll give you a more detailed um, map. I'll show you a more detailed map uh, in just a minute as to the exact uh, way that we went and talk a little bit more about the situation. Uh, we see where we started from, New Barashen, which is uh, a suburb uh, very close to Erebuni, which is about here. Uh, New Barashen, we started from here and we sort of went a bit inland through these, um, I could say, villages of the of uh, Ararat, Ararat province. And uh, so if had we gone the main highway, we would have come down through here to a place called Yurask, just here. This is the main highway where the water all of the, um, uh, m the main transport route is through here and uh, through to Arani that way. But we came through these villages here, through to Artashat. Artashat was the uh, former uh, capital of uh, the Kingdom of Armenia back in the first century BC. And through uh, for about 200 years, that was the capital of the Kingdom of Armenia named after King Artash, Artash, I think. Artashes, I think his name is. Anyway, from there we went uh, to this point, and where I can't remember the name of that town, but we turn off to go to Verdi. Verdi is kind of like the gateway uh, to, uh, to the mountains in Vyatsor. And this road here is absolutely stunning. And it's a good surface also. And there are some very beautiful villages along here. I really recommend that um, people stop at some of these villages and buy some, buy some goods, chat to the locals. They'll probably even invite you into their home. And then we traveled through here. Uh, that we meet up with the main highway here through to Arani. So what I'd like to say um, now is um, 
want to talk a little bit about the situation in Artsakh. Now, Artsakh was located here. I use was and past tense because now uh, this beautiful region of Artsakh, the ancestral home of the Armenian people for centuries and centuries and centuries with ancient churches and kachkas and so much history has now come under the under the rule of Azerbaijan following a uh, a recent uh, attack and the devastating part is that now 120,000 Armenians from Artsakh have nowhere to live. They cannot remain here in their homeland because they are fearful of uh, living under Azerbaijan rule and nobody can blame them for that. When the world turned their back on the plight of these poor people who were starved for nine months, uh, deprived of gas, electricity, all essentials for living by Azerbaijan, by the evil dictator Aliyev. And I don't care who uh, uh, responds in negative terms when I use that term evil, because that's exactly who he is. So here, <clears throat> these people now are coming through in their tens of thousands, fleeing Artsakh, uh, and they're coming into the land of Armenia. You can see it's a very tiny little nation, very, very tiny. And Azerbaijan is also in control. They control this land here. So the next fear is that this part of Armenia, this part, Vyatsor, this part here, and Sunik, the bottom part here, may well be, may well come under attack. Or their intention is, Azerbaijan's intention is to, uh, is to create a link between this region and this region through the land of the uh, sovereign, internationally recognized land of Armenia. And they can't do that, and they shouldn't be allowed to do that, and we will do everything in our power to avoid that happening, because this is a direct link through here to Turkey. And so what I want to say, lastly, is that we need to pray for the peop these people who are no longer got homes to live in, children, some of them without their daddies anymore, who were killed in a, a fuel depot explosion here, killed in uh, the, the attack where I think many were, many were killed and countless others injured. So we have to do everything in our power to now support these people. There's going to be probably 99% of the population of Artsakh now coming in and finding refuge in Armenia. We have to do everything that we can to help them so that this land is protected. Don't be afraid to come here and visit. Don't be afraid to send support through reliable charities. Oh, I can say one thing. Even today, uh, one Indian friend of mine, uh, he's an Indian businessman, has been living in Armenia for the last 10 years. He went down into this region today to see what he could do, such as his love for this country. And um, so in whatever way you can, um, please find ways to support these people uh, that they will be able to find safety and find work and find a place of uh, that, that they can call their home in the remaining part of Armenia. So now we return to our video. It might seem almost uh, in some ways contradictory to return to a journey that we took for two months ago, three months ago, I can't remember. 
but at least you can see the land in this region or leading to this region and uh, it gives you some perspective of uh, maybe where these people will be housed in the future and we want to do everything we can to help them as I said so God bless these people and uh, now we'll return back to the video we just thought we'd show you this beautiful landscape we've just left um, Nubara Shen village I think that way is uh, Gani over there this is fantastic the village there Mount Ararat over there you can't see it very well today ah Shushma what that is it you know go forward and push you hey <laughs> hey uh -huh. um, amazing mountains behind of these mountains is uh, Khosrow forest and um, yeah I just amazing beautiful we don't Lots really creation. have any idea where we're going no we don't know where we're going but uh, amazing scenery around of us and we try to take best of the best shots to show our uh, beloved subscribers. That's all. Yeah. The road on the left takes you to Lanjazat and also Ghani, mm -hmm. and we're heading to Atashat. Lots and lots of fruit trees around here. This yes, area. Yes, uh, cherries, mulberries, apricots. So, for those of you who don't know what this gadget is. Let's try and have a guess what this might be. There's some gas cylinders in there. And there's this thing here. What this does, it shoots uh, like, um, how can I say, like capsules into the clouds. Uh -huh. So it stops it from like Light. thunder and lightning. Ah. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. So it's mostly to protect against hail uh, because hail of course is destroying the uh, the fruit and so they're very worried about that oh it's solar power too so it's a very big fruit going district around here that's what they do and there's a little canal here as well This is the irrigation canal. Isn't this beautiful, Shushma? Valley of fruit trees. What have we got here? Valley of vitamins. What's this here, Shushma? This is mulberry. Mulberry. I wonder we can pick some? No. Yes. No, you'll go sliding down there. Maybe over there? You just take them from here. And yum. yum we yum. are taking mulberries. Mm -hmm. I don't know whose wheel it is. It's okay, it's near the road. It's nobody's. It's what you can do here. You know what I mean, yeah? Now firstly, Mrs. Mitch and I haven't been well for some weeks, so we've not been able to travel anywhere, let alone shoot videos. That being said, this is a video we shot several months ago through some Ararat villages on the back road to Atashat, Vedi, and the picturesque Voskatap Vedi Utsadzor Lanja Highway which joins the main highway from Yerevan to Goris, near the town of Zovashen. Actually, if you go through Verdi, you can travel the main highway uh, from Yerevan to uh, the Verdi turn-off 
on the main highway, if you like, if you don't want to go through the back roads. I would suggest you go through Verdi anyway and take that um, H10 highway, <coughs> which avoids uh, Yaratsk. Uh, that's the turn-off, or there's a big, big roundabout there, and you'll see a big, gigantic uh, Armenian flag there. And Azerbaijan is literally a kilometre or two away from there. So I would avoid, av advise you um, skip that uh, turn off part of the, uh, the main highway to Goris and go through the H10 highway, which is actually very picturesque. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you'll, you'll see beautiful, much more beautiful scenery, I think, anyway going through that way. It takes us another 15 or 20 minutes maybe. Um, so it's not too much longer and uh, uh, you actually travel about the same distance really as well. It's just there's more switchbacks and uh, um, some nice little towns on the way too. Uh, so I think uh, here in this uh, part we are just about to enter, or we are entering um, Atashat. One of our viewers uh, recently asked if I could give a comparison of life in Yerevan to village life. So I'll try and get a start there and uh, <clears throat> give you my, my thoughts on uh, life in Yerevan as compared to, um, as compared to uh, village life. Really, um, there, there isn't really a comparison. I suppose like anywhere in the world, if you were to take, uh, for example, uh, the city of Athens and uh, then go into a Greek village, there would be a stark contrast in the way people live. Well, it's the same here. Um, uh, I, I think I've mentioned uh, that uh, in the past, Sonia and I would love to live in a village one day. And uh, that might be um, that might be a bit of a a dream, uh, and not really that practical. Uh, the reason being is uh, because you're away from so many services, and as you get older, um, you know you want to be you want to be near um, uh, medical facilities. You don't want to be too far away from. Uh, from shops and uh, things like that. Also, um, <clears throat> I, I think it depends on who you know in a village. If you have relatives there, uh, certainly that makes it a whole lot easier uh, if you were to consider living in a village. Uh, and and a, a lot of you have actually written to me about um, uh, would it be possible to live in a village as a, as a foreigner? And uh, I would say, yes, of course, anything is possible, but you have to really ask yourself a question, why would you want to do that if you can't speak the language? I can't even speak the language. I can get by with some words, um, but really it's a matter of um, uh, knowing people, and if you were living in a village, you would want you would want those people close around you. Uh, I'm very fortunate and I have a minion wife and she does most of the talking anyway. <laughs> so uh, that's a big bonus for me. 
As you can see, we're uh, heading towards, um, I think we're heading towards Verdi now. And uh, Verdi is a nice little town. It's getting towards, uh, yeah, we're actually past Verdi, sorry. As you can see, arrow showing to left, you can go to Khosrov uh, Reservation Forest. It's an amazing place. If you be in Armenia, come here and road, going left. Unfortunately, there you need four-wheel drive. They are amazing, amazing, unbelievably beautiful castle. Uh, and uh, from 6th, 7th century. But um, with our car, particular today we're driving our friend car, because our car on a pieces parts and pieces so <laughs> so that's why we can go there and show you maybe some other time fortunately we found the horse with the small baby horse we stopped the car to know whether these are lavender or not Papik and I was very confused so Tatik said let's stop the car and have a look and and finally we found this mother horse and baby horse so uh, the advantage to living in uh, Yerevan but uh, I guess particularly as a foreigner but not necessarily so is that um, you know you're within walking distance of a lot of things for example we can walk into the city center um, Take, have a cup of coffee there if we wanted to, uh, go and see the fountain. Uh, you're always surrounded by lots and lots of people, which, is, uh, which is, has its good and bad points. Um, and you always feel safe uh, in uh, Yerevan. But you know, there is nothing like uh, a village community where your next door neighbor is the person that usually has their door open for you and uh, you just walk in and out of people's places. That's something that you can't do uh, in Yerevan. These, uh, it's not so common anymore. It went, maybe once it used to be. Um, and, and I suppose the other thing is that you haven't got so many things that you can do in a village, particularly uh, of, an, of an evening. Um, there, there are a limited amount of things that you can do in a village. There are many more things that you can do in, in, uh, in the city. So I guess, uh, I guess one of the scenarios that we're looking at is that maybe we can, when we get an opportunity, we, li we like to get out into the vill villages. Uh, you know we have an adopted family in uh, uh, the um, Armavir Plain. Uh, past Etchmeds Inn, so we go there as often as we can, and uh, th th that kind of it's a good feeling because we get it, we get out of Yerevan, and we breathe the fresh air, and we enjoy being able to go into next door neighbours' homes. Uh, it, it's so pleasant. It's it's just so nice, and we love that. But if we were to do that full time, it might be too difficult for us. Then there are then there are jobs, of course. If you know you're in a village, pretty much you um, you're living off the land, or you're a builder or something like that, uh, or the wife maybe has a job, maybe doing sewing or making cakes or things like that. Uh, there are limited um, job opportunities in villages. So you're pretty much self-sufficient. Isn't this beautiful area we're coming to now? These little towns I really love. Um, I love those, uh, what do you call them, trees? Um, oh, I've forgotten. Are they beautiful? Yeah, it's so green and so lovely there and now. It's a vast difference through the mountainous regions, through the villages that are on the plain. Of course, there are more dramatic um, weather events. Um, by that I mean um, there's a lot more. There's a, it's a lot colder here than it is than it would be on the 
uh, Ararat Plain and the um, um, anyway the plains that are around Mount Ararat <coughs> they um, they tend to be quite dry and barren whereas here you have a diversity of um, uh, flora and um, you can see we're getting up into some of the higher mountains now which is really nice so uh, all in all I would say that um, yeah village life has it, it, its its attractiveness I, I can I can see that maybe if Mrs. Mitch and I were 20 or 30 years younger we would have a go at living in one of these villages uh, then, of course, there is the other alternative of living in one of the regional towns or cities. And that may be more attractive, like Gumri, Goris, Vanadzor. Um, some of those areas are still retain the real Armenian character, uh, which I think is slowly being lost um, in, in, um, in Yerevan. So everyone, uh, it's the end of our uh, little tour. To, uh, we ended up somewhere around R&E in, &E in a little village. Yes. And we just want to say thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos. We'll come up with interesting videos. Uh -huh. yes, we will. So it's bye from... Mrs. Mitch. Mitch. And Shushma. <laughs> See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love you.